Crime Five. What'll it be, Mr. Lorimer? Grease and oil change? Yes, yeah, thanks. Hey, yeah. Hmm? Why leave the car and the hoist? Uh, there's something else I'd like you to do. Just name it, Mr. Lorimer. How'd you like to make some money? Oh, wouldn't mind. Well, Al, uh, I'm tired of living, but uh, I want to go out in a blaze of glory. I'll give you a hundred pounds if, while you're working on the car, you cut the brake cables. <laughs> Enjoying the drive, Jan, dear? Lovely scenery. You know I don't like mountain roads. I'm terrified of heights. But I imagine that's why you're driving so carefully. Now, that isn't the reason I'm being so careful, Jan. You see, this car hasn't any brakes. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your boyfriend at the garage. Didn't you think I knew about Al? Well, I did. I paid him a hundred pounds to cut the brake cables. A hundred pounds in marked money. You... You're out of your mind. I told him I was going to commit suicide. And did he jump at it? I think he'd have paid me the hundred pounds if I'd asked for it. Don't you see, Jan? You and the car are going over the next curve. And your boyfriend won't be able to tell the police that it wasn't an unfortunate accident. Won't he? Get Joan, let go of me! There are a few questions I must ask you, Mrs. Lorimer. It's dreadful, Inspector, dreadful. My husband tried to kill me. Have you... have you examined the car? Yes, we've gone over it carefully. I think you'll find the brake cables have been cut. I know who cut them, but you mustn't blame him. It, it was Al at the garage. Frank offered him a hundred pounds. He told Al he intended to commit suicide. You won't arrest Al, will you? We're trying to clear up a number of aspects of the case. Uh, could you tell me how you managed to get clear before the car plunged over the cliff? <laughs> I'm not certain myself. Frank and I were struggling. At the last instant, I must have let go of him and opened my door. I, I remember falling, and then I woke up here in hospital. And the brakes didn't function at any time? How could they? They'd been cut. At least Frank said they were cut. Yes, there's no doubt on that score. Oh, uh, incidentally, you've a visitor. Oh, well, you shouldn't have come here. Is she uh, all right, Inspector? Mrs. Lorimer's quite all right. Uh, in fact, her condition is remarkably good for someone who jumped from a moving vehicle. Well, why say it like that, Inspector? Because Mrs. Lorimer didn't jump from a moving vehicle. Our examination of the death car on the curve of the road where the car ran over the cliff prove it conclusively. But what are you saying? I'm saying that I'm booking you both on suspicion of murder. Skid marks made by the two rear tyres showed that before the car went over the cliff, it had been brought to a full stop by the application of the handbrake. We found the footbrake was indeed useless, but the handbrake had been renewed. I believe you and your young man arranged it between you over the phone, Mrs Lorimer, after your husband made his offer of the £100. At the last moment, you pulled up the car sharply with the handbrake. Either your husband was knocked unconscious by the sudden unexpected stop, or you hit him with some blunt instrument. Then you got out and sent the car over the cliff. I repeat, Mrs. Lorimer, the charge is murder. Murder! <laughs>